Enjoy! Thank you! Thank you! Hello guys! It is Shava! Welcome back to my channel and thank you for clicking on my video! So, kicking off the Thursday vids with a QA. and a It was Jamie's suggestion to be honest and I thought it was a great one because I... I'm a bit rusty on these, you know, and I need to sort of like get back into the swing of things. So thank you for everyone who um, sent me questions. I popped it on Instagram and Twitter and honest to God, I really thought I was going to get about three questions and all of them were going to be, can you ask Jamie? Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> but I got a lot more, way more than I expected. So thank you so much for engagement. Thank you so much for giving me questions. There is a mix actually. It's not all about Jamie. It's mostly about me and, and life. And I think that's really cool. I won't be able to answer everything though, because otherwise this would be like a three hour video. Lord knows I babble enough as it is. Um, so apologies if I don't answer your question. Also disclaimer, if I I read your username or your name out wrong I'm really really sorry I hate it when people do this to me so I'll try my best but if I don't get it right you can just shame me shame 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 so as I had so many questions and they were so varied and I am so anal about these kind of things I have split the questions into five different subjects that I will be answering today there were two additional subjects that I've actually left out one is on trans related stuffs for those of you who don't know my partner Jamie is trans and I will be answering those but because I just did a video on his channel where loads of people have actually asked additional questions I'm gonna stick them together and do that in a video later on the other type of questions I've left out are the really really cute sweet ones I mean thank you so much you guys are beautiful and so complimentary and I feel like you're watching someone else who's not me because you're just too kind about things like my appearance and my personality like I'm really not that great of a person I can tell you but thank you for those of you who took the time to comment or to write questions about like being friends or like prettiness because I mean I just can't take a compliment I'm just so freaking awkward um, but <laughs> okay to the questions Maybe it's this way. So the first subject is how stuff. Fro Chaza, I'm already doing it wrong. Shame asks, how is life now that you and Jamie have a proper house compared to a flat? Riker Gray asks, what's your favorite thing about your new house? I have the same answer for both of these. The most amazing thing about living in a house in comparison to a flat is one, how the cat reacts to stairs. It's just hilarious. And two, the ability to put stuff in different rooms and shut doors and know that it's in a place it should be. It is amazing. I mean, that's my favorite thing about having a house. There are rooms, which means you can compartmentalize stuff. There's hallway, there's storage space. Those things that I like are also the differences between a flat and a house. Noel Etchen asks, do you have any tips for moving together with your significant other? Love your video so much, lots of love, lots of love back. Well, I can answer this in relation to me and Jamie. Moving in together is the most amazing thing. I feel like and I'm not just saying this in terms of me, other couples that I've seen who are just about to move in together or who live together and now are no longer living together seem to experience the same things. When you're apart, there is like a massive tension because you wanna do stuff like get on with life, but you also want to be in the same place. And it's really difficult to do both without feeling like being with your partner is impeding on your plans. When you live together, that completely goes away because you are just in each other's space. So that's a really good thing. And I think it actually relieves a lot of tension. The downside that comes with that, and I think this is the reason that a lot of people say living together will make or break your relationship, is that if you don't communicate properly, you can just really get under each other's feet. So it's important to give each other your personal space as well. Even if it's in a small space, it can still happen. And it's also important to make sure that you're both happy with the responsibilities that you're doing. Some of the biggest arguments that Jamie and I had when we were living together at the flat, and to be honest, still now, though we don't argue about it anymore because I'm a lot better, is to do with cleaning. I don't clean. I don't do like tidying up messes. I'm not a dirty person, I'm just a messy person. And at the flat there were so many times at the beginning when we were still sort of figuring out how the whole responsibilities thing worked where Jamie felt like he was just doing everything. And he does do a lot of the cleaning but then I took on additional responsibilities that meant he had time to clean whilst I did things like sorting out all the bills, doing the food shops, putting the food away, doing the cooking. So it's about being fair and speaking to each other. I think that's like a pretty good motto for life. Oh, I'm a little bit nervous and I don't know why. Okay, next question. Have you guys thought of what you, what has my hair done? 
Spike's Grandmaster asks, have you guys thought of what you want in your garden? Do you know, the garden is something that we always leave behind. We said that we would do the flat garden every single summer for four years and we just didn't touch it. We bought a bamboo plant, but that's about it. I do have plans for this garden. I'd love to have barbecue parties. Now that we have a proper little garden that's enclosed, I really want to buy like an egg nest thing that hangs. So it's kind of like a little hammock, but that you can sit in. I think the cat would really appreciate that too. I also really, really would like to get uh, a gnome or some matching gnomes. Jamie likes the idea of a zombie gnome, but that just scares me a little bit. And I really want to paint the shed. I just want something out there to be big and in beautiful different colors. That's the plan, that's the plan. Now watch it not happen for about 10 years. <laughs> Asiomatic asks, would you consider getting another pet if so, what type? Jamie is constantly pestering me for a dog and I do, I genuinely do want a dog, just now is not the right time. In the future though, once we've settled down a little bit, once we've, you know, got our careers, whatever they may be, kickstarted, I would love to get a dog. Something small and cuddly and cute and fluffy. Absolutely love Polo, we already have cat. Okay, you're probably also gonna think that I'm a bit weird, but the other thing that I'd really like to have, it was like on my childhood dream list, is like an exotic fish tank with jellyfish. I love jellyfish and I would love to have three jellyfish called Snap, Crackle and Pop. Okay, moving on to the next topic, which is relationships and wedding and Jamie stuff. So Sarah asks, Sarah, 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 Squinchilla. When will there be more Sims videos of you two? Soon, soon, it is in the plan. They are just a but to edit. So I need to allocate a lot of time for filming, but also for editing before we put them up. The next one is gonna be on Jamie's channel though, and I'll make sure he promos it on his social media. Eeny Beeny, also known as Coinus Venus, which is just amazing, asks, is Jamie short for James or is it just Jamie? What does your name mean, Shava? So, I feel like this is a wrong place to put this. Oh well, Jamie is just Jamie, it's not short for James. And the reason for that is because Jamie's last name is Reigns and James Reigns sounds really weird. <laughs> My name, Shava, is apparently, according to my parents, who would know, so I don't know why I'm saying apparently, it is made up of two Arabic words, which are supposedly Shah and Arba. Um, I, I don't speak Arabic, so if any of you do, you can like con confirm that for me and tell me what my name means. <laughs> but what I've been told is that Shah and Arba come together to form a phrase that has various translations, but basically translates into morning star or dawn star. So there you go. Is dawn when the sun goes up or goes down? I assume because it could also be morning star, it's when the sun goes up, which I don't think works for me because I'm certainly not a morning person. So I'm just gonna pretend that dawn means the sun going down and that it's dawn star, cause that's just cooler and more like me. Michael Mikhail Edvardson asks, how old are you? What's your favorite food? Do you have any phobias? I'm gonna stop there cause there are many questions. I am 23 and Jamie is 24 and he will always be older than me, ha ha ha. My favorite food, oh my gosh, that is such a hard one. I would probably have to say pasta. <laughs> it, it varies, but it'll either be pasta, some form of creamy sauce, or some form of chocolate and cream dessert. Nothing that is good for you, basically. <laughs> In terms of phobias, I guess my biggest fear is failure. I know that sounds so cliche, but it's something that very much gets to me. On a more trivial level, I'm scared of being shocked, like seeing things in the dark. Does that make sense? It's like looking when I'm doing a pee out the bathroom mirror at night and just seeing like a hand or a face, I would definitely poop myself. Which would probably not be a bad idea because I'd be on the toilet, but yeah, poop. Yeah. Can you come through please? Someone's asked you some questions too. Thank you. Question, can I sit behind you? You can. Okay, ready? Oh, look, I look like a frog. How old are you? I answered that already. Uh, what's your favorite food? Uh, my favorite food is a toss up between steak or mac and cheese uh -huh. <gasps> or cinnamon buns. That's a recent thing, but yeah. Uh, do you have any phobias? Um, yes. I don't know. I just said yes. <laughs> I mean, I guess I do kind of have a phobia of being sick, but yeah. Oh, yeah, what's the difference between phobia and anxiety? The anxiety comes out of the fear of being sick. Okay, there yeah. you go. Okay, do you want to just stay here for the rest of the relationship wedding Jamie stuff? Yeah. Okay, cool. So these, uh, Laura's Life, It's Morgan, L Jot and Annie all basically asked about honeymoons and weddings. How's the wedding plan going? It's not. <laughs> <laughs> it kind 
Anyways, <laughs> I mean, beautiful news. Jamie's brother recently got engaged. He's a little bit older, and he I'm gonna be and the best man. Fiance are super, super excited to get their wedding planning going. I think they've already booked stuff. Yeah, so we're gonna no, let them do their thing whilst we sit back and watch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's going like super, super slow, but. We're hoping for a wedding like in a few years. Will you wear a typical white cream ivory dress at your wedding? I um, want I wasn't to. planning on wearing a dress. <laughs> I, I mean, I could. I do want to, but I also like the idea of wearing an Asian outfit. But I understand that the Asian way of doing things, you have like a little Asian ceremony to solidify things that way. And then a uh, sort of whatever wedding you want to have. So we'll probably end up having both outfits. Two, yeah. But yeah. I definitely do want to wear a white dress. It's done anything. <laughs> Have you met me? <laughs> That's gonna be cake. so hard. Okay, uh, honeymoon. Where are we going? The Maldives. That's what you want. I want to go on a hut on the sea. Jamie loves the idea of those floating huts in the Maldives. With like However, a little glass floor where you can see the fishies. Super happy to do that, but also perhaps this could be an additional holiday. Though someone said it would be cute for a honeymoon, and I agree. Mauritius. Oh yeah. Something to think about, yeah. but actually I don't like the idea of doing that for a honeymoon because I'd love to go somewhere No, but new. we definitely should go to Mauritius at some 100%. point together. Yeah. Okay, what's your biggest hope but equally fears of getting married? Don't have any fears about getting married. I Financial do. ruin? <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess my biggest fear, like everyone always says that when you're married, a game over, haha, <laughs> life's over, you know, it's boring and you lose touch and you don't have sex anymore and it's all just sucky and that kind of I don't want that to be true, so I guess that would be my biggest fear. Yeah, but Realizing I wonder if that's that just because like, so. when you get married, it, it means you've been together longer, and obviously the longer you're together, the less kind of exciting things are, but we've already been together for like six and a bit years, and I still feel like things are exciting and interesting. Fair. Yeah. Uh, biggest hope? Biggest hope for getting married? Tax evasion. I'm kidding. Shut <laughs> up! <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm Maybe kidding. Maybe don't say that. Uh, I am entirely kidding. I don't know about biggest hope, like bringing our families together. Bringing our families together and being able to queen my way. God, that's so <laughs> cheesy. Isabel Conlon asks, I've probably pronounced that wrong. <coughs> Sorry. Do you and Jamie plan on having children one day? Yeah. Yes. Two. Three. Two, and then I would really, really like to adopt an older child at yeah. some point. So two and then adopt and fur babies. Fur babies, yes. Yeah. Is engaged life much different to just dating life, asks Maxi the Unicorn. Um, no, but it feels like more official when talking to people about you. Yeah, I agree. And actually, it's more how people treat you, especially when they see that you've got a ring. Yeah. Yeah. I feel more grown up. Also, I feel like we've taken a core commitment. Like, yeah. I quite like it. It I doesn't really committed to you. tangibly affect anything, but no. it's cool. Yeah. I guess it tangibly affects my finger. <gasps> Lines. Oh, damn it. <laughs> and Sean asks, how do you and Jamie deal with arguments? Love you both. Love you too. Normally, this is how arguments go. <clears throat> Jamie does something stupid. Shaba calls Jamie out on said stupid thing. Jamie denies stupid thing and defends stupid thing. Jamie realises much later on when Shaba's gotten incredibly mad that stupid thing was very stupid, <laughs> then goes and grovels and apologises. Shaba is upset. Discussion ensues. Argument over. Make friends. So if you know this, why do you continue to do stupid things? I like the drama. <laughs> it's not always just Jamie. Yeah. Like, arguments just happen, and sometimes I can overreact to stuff, Jamie can overreact to stuff. Jamie's solution to arguing, at least in the short term, is to run away and to not talk and to calm down, but that just riles me up more yeah. because it leaves it longer, and the longer that something's not resolved, the more angry I get. I do want to resolve, yeah, but I do... When I'm in that moment, like really upset and angry, I want to go and take some time because I will just do more stupid things. So basically, the normal way that we resolve arguments is Jamie goes off and has like a minute to himself before I get ridiculously <laughs> extra angry. I go and shout at him. We both realise we're wrong in some way. Eat humble pie, apologise, and Hug, make out. Eat pudding. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't think an argument's ever lasted like overnight. I, no, I try to make that thing just because yeah. I like die in my sleep or you die in your sleep. Oh, I feel really no, guilty. I just think it's a really good ethos not to fall asleep angry at each other. That's also a good reason. Okay, lastly, good, my Jamil MK asks, did you ever imagine you? That's not for you. Go. Oh, go. Yay. Enjoy. Thank you. Thank you for calling me. I love you. Love you too. Jamil asks, did you ever imagine your life going the way it went, like being engaged at 23, working, owning a house? Would you change anything about your life right now? 
Aww, and then a really cute message about my vlogs, thank you. I'm glad you like them. No, I cannot believe that this is how my life has turned out. I didn't think I would be engaged at 23. I looked at my mum and how young she like started a family and stuff. And that just made me think I never want to be like that. Not because her life's turned out bad in any way, just because she's always said to me, don't settle down early, education, career, have fun, then get married and all of that stuff. So I never thought I'd find someone at 23. I always thought that I would start looking at like 30. <laughs> also definitely didn't think that I'd be owning a house. I think that's really, really cool. And I'm actually really, really proud of that. I think Jeremy and I have done so well on that front. And I'm sorry if that sounds arrogant, but I do have pride in how far we've come in that sense. And yeah, I would change things about my life right now. Right now? Right now. The one thing that I'm really, that's quite prominent in my life that I don't like and I don't know why it is I have a feeling it's probably some form of anxiety that Jamie's telling me that I need to go explore but I just I don't want to just yet I really struggle with working a nine to five job I don't know what it is I just don't like the idea of being an employee this is like my fifth fifth job yes it's not something that's changed i don't do a bad job i'm not lazy i'm not averse to doing work i just don't like the idea of waking up to go in for nine staying somewhere until five and being told what to do i know nobody likes it grow up shall you have to deal with it blah 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 but i'm trying to make that change i don't want to just deal with it and i'm trying to um work for myself and until then i still put as much effort as i can into my job and i do it well if i could change anything i wish i'd gotten on to that self-starting stuff sooner so that i wouldn't still be in a job right now but having said that stepping back i am so lucky i feel really blessed to have like the life that i do have right now and i wouldn't have this if it wasn't for my lovely family and friends so Okay, next section, YouTube stuff. Did Jamie get you into doing YouTube? Asks I'm weird okay underscore okay. Okay. In a way, yeah, I guess he did. If it wasn't for Jamie documenting his transition online, I would have never seen YouTube. I didn't really know YouTube, to be honest, until I knew Jamie. It wasn't something that I used. However, we do very different kinds of YouTube. When Jamie was still documenting his transition, I've always said I wanted to put my music stuff on YouTube as just a little stage for me. But to this day, I still haven't. I've done a few covers, um, but I'm just, I'm just nervous. And so I, I never really did that. I put like one piano cover up about six years ago or whatever it was, and then just left it. But now I do YouTube that's also very different to Jamie's. Um, I vlog, he hates vlogging and does vlog, but Jamie was definitely the reason that I got into it in the first place. It's just not the reason why I continue, or do I do now? Ale Ascala asks, do you have a different job or are you 100% dedicated to YouTube? I wish I was 100% dedicated to YouTube. Um, no, I, I am not. Uh, I do have a different job and I don't think I'll ever be able to make money off of YouTube for a living. Um, you need to be like really big to do that and I just don't think, and I'm completely cool with this, but I'm not the kind of person that has the potential to do that, so. It's cool. Christopher Phillips says, how do you and Jamie balance spending enough time making amazing content and studying, working and still having enough time to keep your relationship as strong as ever? Aw, thank you. Um, yeah, with great difficulty. <laughs> Jamie's okay at the moment. He is doing a PhD currently. Um, so he's a student and is super autonomous with his time. Um, he does a lot of work for his PhD, but he does have time in and around that to make videos on a schedule. I think it's just dedication and passion. We do it because it's fun. I'm doing this because it's fun. And even if it means really stressful days like today where I come home during my lunch break to film videos, it means I get to do what I wanna do and that makes me happy. So good time management and dedication and just good willpower. It's so easy to just sit on the sofa and be like, I'm going to stay here for the next four hours. Zombie Landy asks, which do you think is more difficult, making YouTube content or having a normal job like the one you have? Definitely most difficult, yeah? Definitely most difficult is having a nine to five job for me. It is, it is so hard. It is inexplicable as to why I find it so difficult, but it feels like there are rocks attached to my feet most mornings that are just stopping me from getting up and getting out of bed, knowing that that's how my day's gonna go. Whereas with YouTube content, I love it. It is difficult. Editing can be a butt. Coming up with video ideas all the time can be a butt. With vlogging as well, trying to always get that balance right between making sure you're living life not just for the camera, but that you're doing stuff to make your content interesting can be a butt. But overall, it's beautiful and I very much enjoy making YouTube content. 
Also, what is your favorite flower? Flavor, 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 favorite ugh, flower, and do you know the meaning of it? Don't think I have a favorite flower. I guess, and this sounds super cliche, it would be a rose. It would be a rainbow rose because the meaning to me is the engagement and proposal. But also, my grandpa calls me and my three sisters on my mum's side after different things, so I am Princess Rosebud. And my sisters are Princess Ruby, Jasmine and Dahlia. And Jasmine and Dahlia are obviously different flowers. So um, it would probably be one of those flowers. In terms of looks, there's a really gorgeous flower actually that's like a, kind of looks like a trumpet. And I took a photo of it in a garden centre once, but it didn't have a label. Maybe that would be my favourite flower. I'm indecisive. I don't know. Krod10 asks, if you could collaborate with another YouTuber anywhere in the world, who would it be and why? Do I have to choose one? It's so hard. Obviously, Jamie. He is the most fun person to make videos with. Based on other YouTubers, it's quite difficult because you never know whether people are really like their online personas. But if everybody was like they are online, the people that I would love to meet, uh, not even just do a video, just meet to be honest and chill with, and yeah, I guess collab with, um, would be Lily Singh, aka Superwoman. She is amazing. She is funny, she is powerful, she is strong, and she is brown, and she is a woman, and she is kicking ass in this industry, which I think is just so cool. It would be Mark Ferris, because he is just a beautiful soul. He just looks so happy and friendly and cool. Jamie, as I said, and to be honest, there's probably also just a really long line of musical people that I'm not going to mention. I don't think I'm anywhere near as good as them and so I don't want them ever hearing this. But yeah, just a load of people that do really creative and cool covers to do like music collabs. Maybe someday. Right, moving on. Work and uni stuff. What would you say the hardest part of university is when you were starting, says Emma Bubble. For me, it was definitely figuring out yourself and where you place. I don't make friends very easily. And I actually dropped out of university. I wouldn't have gone to uni if it wasn't for Jamie really pushing me. It's figuring yourself out and finding the environment and the community that's right for you. For me, that was the hardest thing. Finding a group of people that I really connected with and gelled with and an environment that really suited me or didn't suit me. Don't mind me or do whatever says, uh, what motivated you to do your masters and what did Jamie and I major in at uni? Oh, Joe jo asked that second question, sorry. I don't think we major in the same way as the US. The US system sounds a lot cooler where you can like do different subjects and major in them. Here you just sort of choose one subject and you just go along with it. Unless you're doing like a double joint course. I did law in my undergrad and business as my masters, and Jamie has just done psychology, 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 psychology. What motivated me to do a masters was because I did a law degree because I love the idea of studying law. I then tried to be a lawyer and I got placement and I went on it and I hated it. I really didn't like the environment. It was nothing like actually studying law. So when I realized that that wasn't for me, I started to apply for jobs that were not legal and everyone was saying, you need business experience if you want to do this kind of job. So I was like, oh. My boss at the time said that there was a scholarship going, which I applied for and I happened to get it. <laughs> and so it just sort of made sense. I went and did my masters alongside the job. I was working part-time, but I was studying full-time. It was kind of intense, but it was okay. And yeah, that's when I did my business and marketing degree. Sam, I, I am 96. Oh my gosh, if that's playing Dr. Zeus. <laughs> says, what is the most exciting part of your day? Oh, it's gonna sound so cringe. It's gonna be coming home and seeing Jamie and the cat because they just get so excited in very different ways. The cat like acts all brr, brr, feed me, feed me. I'm pretending that I just use you, but actually I'm really glad you're back. At least that's what I like to think he says. Jamie just gets super excitable and sometimes it's a bit annoying, but he would just like rattle on at me with everything he's done that day. And it just makes me happy because it's like he's bottled it all up inside and now he's just going I don't know, it's cute. Okay, and Consulting Criminal and Ray Stark 94 and Eljot all basically ask what I do for a living. I work at the university in a specific department. I'm called an executive officer, but titles at the uni really just don't mean anything. <laughs> Basically what I do is uh, manage the office and some admin stuff. I set up websites and marketing materials. I try to increase the presence of where we are. I work for a really, really cool boss and help her basically just make the world know this is what we do. And I run a summer school 
which is taking up pretty much half my year. Which is so much fun because I love event management. It's it's basically just planning a very big complex party. So that is what I do. Okay, and the final section, everything else stuff. There are so many questions. <gasps> Benjamin asks, what's the difference between a quid and a pound? They are the same thing. A quid is just what a Londoner calls it. Is it like a dollar and a buck? Is a buck a dollar? If it is, it's just like a slang term for it, then it's the same thing. Max and the Unicorn and Hoping for Inspiration both ask about dream holidays. I am dying to go on holiday. I cannot tell you how much I want to go on a holiday. Jamie and I haven't actually gone abroad, just the two of us, and it's something that I really want to do, and I just really want to go somewhere warm. I've not been away in such a long time. I want a holiday. There are two types of dream holidays. Number one is to go somewhere like the Maldives, somewhere just very warm, somewhere super luxurious with like a spa and a beach and beautiful fresh fruit and to just chill. I say do nothing, but it's not do nothing. I can never just do nothing. It just explore the cultures of somewhere super holiday-like. You know those kind of holidays where the only thing in your suitcase are bikinis and straws and sunglasses? That one. But the other holiday that I really want to do is something super intense and active. The idea of like quad biking, parachuting, just exploring, hiking, going to beautiful natural places, beautiful home communities, that sort of thing. So yeah, uh, I'd really like to do that in Iceland. I'd love to explore Iceland, that'd be so much fun. I'd love to go and do that in Dubai, uh, Thailand, you know, like the more rural areas, not the touristy places. Ah, oh, and there's another vacation that I want to do that's so completely different and it's something that Jamie wants to do as well. We want to do a giant, like, many month trip in the US and like hire a car and drive down one coast and then fly and then drive down the other. I'm Bad Wolf asks, the worst way someone has pronounced your name. Okay, are you ready? My name is Shaba. I always get Shaba. I've had a Shabby. I've had Shaba, Sheba, Sherba, Shabbat, Charlotte, believe it or not. Shana is a common one. Sherba, I've had that too. Mr. Loton, I get quite a lot because I guess Shaba isn't inherently feminine. And the most impressive one yet, Shilpa. Shil? Pa. Shilpa. CJ Quinn 72 asks what never fails to make you laugh. So when I'm in a really bad mood, you guys are gonna think I am horrible. Hey, I'm honest. When <laughs> I'm in a really bad mood, the only thing that will always make me laugh is watching little kids hurt themselves. <laughs> oh my God, I'm terrible. <laughs> Jamie watches a lot of fail videos and we found this one sort of set or series, which is kids kids fails and it's either kids falling over or kids hitting themselves in the face. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> this is one particular one that makes me laugh so much. This is a little kid coming down a pole. Like <laughs> stop it, stop it. So little kid coming down a pole and he just kinda it's, it's like it's really drunk and it just sort of falls and then you just see it on the floor like <laughs> then there's one where a kid goes down the slide and he's just going <laughs> Kids fails, check him out, oh my gosh, or like when a mum bounces a ball and it accidentally like whacks him in the f <sighs> Kids fails, kids fails, it's so funny What is your favourite thing about yourself? asks Caden Jixon I love you by the way, thank you, much love I don't, I don't know What's my favourite thing about myself? Physically, probably my hair Okay, I guess it would be my positive outlook. I really think it's a good quality that I possess where in really stressful situations, I don't get like really panicky and like, <sighs> I mean, sometimes I do, but it doesn't last very long and I can almost always find a way to make it positive to get through it. Um, and it's something that Jamie doesn't have and it's something that I realise that I do have and that I'm very thankful for whenever things do go wrong. Okay, what is your favourite type of ice cream? Asks E.K. Guatin and Magical Maxine. Uh, 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 chocolate with chocolate. Um, I also like raspberry sorbet, it's beautiful, and mint choc chip, which is also good. Oh my god, my favourite ice lolly though, I don't think that counts, is the banana ice lolly, you know, the really cheap one that you get from the ice cream fans. <gasps> They're amazing! Not having a long time, but I do have shower gel that smells like it, and it's so exciting. Not Jay Anderson asks, red apples or green apples? Red. Mm. Green. Mm. Which is sweeter? <gasps> red. 
Lil Lemon says, if you cut a crumb in half, is it two crumbs or two halves of one crumb? This is such a good question. And honestly, when I get comments like this, I genuinely spend like 15 minutes contemplating existential life crises. I have deduced that it depends on the way you look at it. If you have like a five pound note and you cut it in half, you don't have two pound 50. It's two halves of the same thing. They don't become their own things. But if you have a cake and you cut it in half, it does become two cakes. So I'm gonna go with it becomes two crumbs because a crumb doesn't inherently have an identity that requires it to remain whole. Why am I so weird? So many people have asked, what animal would I be and why? And if I were any animal, what would I be? My favorite animal is a jellyfish, though I wouldn't want to be a jellyfish. I don't know what I would want to be. Probably like a sloth or an otter because I think they're useful and cute and good company. But I don't know guys, comment below. Let me know what animal you think I would be. If you could have a superpower, what would it be? And what would your superhero name be? Says Sleepy Space Boy. I have no idea what my super name would be, but my superpower would definitely be controlling time. I wouldn't want anything where you can hear what other people think because I think people are inherently evil. <laughs> I'm kidding, but I do think that that would be a very sad world. But if you can control time, you've essentially also got teleportation, right? Because you can take a hundred years to get somewhere, but it won't be a hundred years because there'll be no time because you could stop time. So that one. Noel asks, what is your favorite video game and what is your favorite video, 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 video game character? I'm so glad you like the videos. Um, my favorite video game, ew, it's hard. I can't choose one, but I do have like a top list. Red of Redemption, so good and the Drake Uncharted series, also so good. It's like Tomb Raider, but better. And you get to stare at a male butt, which you don't really see very often. It's normally the women who are very sexualized. Video game characters. Ooh, the main character in Heavenly Sword is so pretty. Uh, Spyro, Spyro is very cool. I don't think I have one favorite video game character. Lara Croft is really cool. If I could be a video game character, I would be Lara Croft. And oh my gosh, Far Cry 5 is out and I'm so excited to get my hands on that. Z asks, if you butted a cat back and dropped it from a clearly survivable height, would it land on its feet or butted side down? Whilst I like the theories that are happening in the Twitter thread, I don't think they're true. I don't know who on earth said that cats always fall on their feet. Apollo, our cat, just doesn't. 90% of the time he'll fall on his butt or on his side and quickly scramble up. So I am pretty certain he would fall on his back because toast always seems to go wrong for me. Faye Brubacher, mm -hmm, sorry, <coughs> says anything special that you do to get out of a bad mood. When I'm in a really bad mood, the one thing that I love to do is either watch kids get hit in the face. <laughs> or the other thing that I do is sit down and take a step back and look at everything that has gone right. All the people that I love who love me back, all the things that I have done that I'm proud of or that I've achieved, just happy, happy things. And then I try and, it depends on how rational I'm being, but then I try and realize that whatever is happening is just one very, very tiny nugget in the McChicken share box that is life. In the grand scheme of things, it's not gonna last long. And that makes me able to move on. Okay, I. I I thought I could get through so many more questions. I'm sorry, this is already gonna be such a long video. I will just do a few more. How do you keep your hair looking so nice? Asks Bethany Kendall. There's another hair one. What products do you use on your hair? Yellow Panda Bear. Oh, Yellow Panda Bear. I don't keep my hair nice. I used to straighten my hair every single day and it was just so much effort and I love the fact that I have curly hair now. So I just let it do its thing. My hair is also very thick and it also ends up really knotty, but the trick for me is to always pat it when I go to bed at night. Use hairspray, like the detangling stuff. I use the kids one that smells like purr. Oh my God, it's so good. And also don't brush or comb it. Whenever I finish, like I will brush it wet and then I will let it dry and I will just do this and let it dry like that in curls. And then it just sort of does this. Sometimes it does it a lot better. It does like this doesn't look so flat all the time, but that is how. Um, in terms of products, I, I don't actually use any products in my hair. As I said, I use the Kids L'Oreal Pear Hairspray <laughs> to detangle it, the detangling stuff. Um, but apart from that, uh, nothing. Yeah, nothing. This is, this is bed hair. I don't even brush or comb my hair when I wake up in the morning. I only brush my hair when I wash it. A lot of you are probably judging me right now, but meh. Okay, final question, because this is really too long now. Michelle Louise asks, do you believe pineapple belongs on pizza? Yes, I do. I love pineapple on pizza and I love olives on pizza. 
bite me. No, I'm kidding. I mean, you do you, but I do genuinely really, really love pineapple on pizza. And I know that it's not traditional pizza. I don't care. It tastes good. My battery just ran out of me, so that is definitely the place to stop. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was insightful. I think that was a really fun way to kick off Thursday videos. Let me know if you enjoy them. Let me know if this is a kind of thing that you want to see. I think it's kind of weird just talking about myself every week. I will mix it up, but yeah. I just, let, let me know if you liked it. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe if you would like to see more. The bell. Comment below and let me know what animal you think I am, what animal you think you are, and your favorite type of ice cream, because I think I could be a bit more adventurous on that front. Right, I will see you next Monday with another vlog, next Thursday with another this kind of video, and be kind and have a great day. Bye.